They also think, yes, that we can be possessed by uh, beings and demons. Okay. Quite a few. Yeah, quite a few. Good. What about the others? You think like you cannot be possessed? Hmm? Yes. You know, <clears throat> in certain times, normal people, not the not the enlightened beings, okay, that means uh, not the arahats, but also some other people can be possessed by, except arahats, some other people can be possessed by certain, uh, uh, certain demons, or not demons, I would say, like ghosts, okay? They can take control of our mind. Do you know how? How they take control of our mind? Now, if there are some, like, if there are some, uh, I would say, regrets, or if there are some uh, evil deeds that we have done and we are regretting about the, those things, or if, if we have defilements in our mind, put they? Then uh, they can easily, they can easily take control of our mind. Okay, so that can happen. But if you can, if you if your mind, if your mind is very strong, and if your mind is very uh, develop, well developed with the meditation, then it's very difficult for someone to possess. Okay, Buddha said that if someone practices the loving kindness meditation. Okay, if you practice loving kindness meditation, uh, and if you if you are good at that, and if you if your mind is well practiced in loving kindness meditation, then no uh, no demons or anyone can hurt you. Okay, that's the way. Very good. Let's go for the other one. Yeah, science, science, uh, or the medical science, and uh, scientists say that it is a mental disorder being possessed, but it can go in both ways with it. Okay, because we haven't seen, we have, we haven't seen this world totally, and we haven't discovered this world totally. Okay, so there are certain things that we cannot explain by with the science. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> let's see, let's go for another. Oh, good question. What do we see when we die? Okay, what do you think? What will you see when you die? Huh? Nothing? Mahidi, Mahidi, what, what do you think? What will you, what do you, what will you see when you die? Uh, after I die, you'll get suffering. Yeah, no, I, I'm asking what will you see when you are dying? You'll regret, regret. Oh, okay, okay. Not do. everyone regret, okay? Yeah. Some of them can uh, have good uh, deeds and some have bad deeds. So mm -hmm. some can okay. regret and some don't need to regret. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Now, when someone is about to die, okay? When someone is about to die, they say that uh, people see some certain things about their next life. Okay. People see certain things about the next life, how they are going to be born, okay, what world they are going to be born. That can happen. Okay. And I would say in the time of dying, people won't see anything, no? Everything will go dark. I haven't seen because I haven't been dead, you know. So no one no one know how and what will we see in the time of the death. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, 
Uh, some of you have said it is black or uh, you go you go black house. It can happen, no? <clears throat> what is lust? Hmm, that's a good question. What is lust? What do you think? Can anyone explain here? What is lust? Hmm? Who can explain what is lust? The word lust. Now there are uh, there are three defilements, okay? That is the lust, anger, and delusion. Okay, lust, anger, and delusion. Raga, dvesha, moha. Lust is the desire. Lust is the desire for something or someone. I would say, okay. We get we have desires for people as well as we have desires for certain things in our life, of objects in our life. It can be food, it can be clothes, it can be a person, it can be something else, right? Do you have lust in your mind? Yes, we do, right? What, what, what about uh, when you see your favorite, favorite food? You feel like a connection, no? You feel like, like the food is talking to you. Come and eat me. Okay. That is done by your lust. That is done by your desires, attachment. Okay. But they said that you have to remove the attachment with it. If you remove the attachment, then you don't want to suffer and you don't want to worry about it. Because sometimes we suffer because of our, our desires. Do we? Yes. Right? Sometimes when we are thinking about something that we like, okay, let's say a food, but we cannot get it. Okay? We cannot have it now. So our mind keeps thinking about it and worrying about it. Why cannot I cannot have a pizza? Why can I cannot my why my parents are not buying me chocolates? That happens, no? Okay, so that is desire, that is lust. Okay. Let's see. What will happen in the afterlife? What will happen in the afterlife if you did not, if you, if you did not become an arahant in this life, you will be reborn. Okay, in another life. Well, I, I don't know where you're going to be reborn. Okay, that is that depends on your karma. Okay, that depends on your karma that you have collected in your life. Children, do you know what is karma? Who can explain, who can give the meaning of karma? Yashod, can you? Karma is what you do, like good and bad actions. Yeah, the, there is one, one word is missing in that explanation. Your, your explanation is correct, but there's one word is missing. Can you think of that word? Karma is what you do intentionally. What is it? Intentionally. Intentionally, with intention. Okay. We do, so we do things with intention. Okay. So that is called karma. Okay. The Buddha said, Chetanahang Bhikkave Kammang Vadabhi. Have you ever heard of that verse? 
Chetanang Bhikkave Kamang Vadami means what it says. The intention is the karma. Okay? It says your intention becomes your karma. Good. <clears throat> Let's see. Ah, who is this? Okini. Okini is asking, do monks go home and see their relatives? Yes, I go. Right? And most of the monks, they can go and see their relatives. Okay? Maybe like once in a six, uh, once in a... Uh, for six months, I go to, to see my parents. Okay. Sometimes they call me. So we can go. There are no restrictions like that. Ah. Uh, it's a good question. Is everything in life is controlled by karma? What do you think about that? Is everything in this life happens because of karma or not? Hands up you those who say that everything is because of karma. Everything that happens to you is because of karma. Oh, there are many children. Good, good. Okay, put your hands down. Hands up those who say that not everything that happens in, in life is karma. Not everything that happens in life. And who is going to win? But then not everything that happens in life is because of karma. Okay. There are certain things that happens without the effect of karma. Let's say you're going to, we are getting ready to go to a place, okay, go to school or somewhere else. All of a sudden it started raining. Yeah. And all of a sudden it started flooding. Now what happened? Can you go? No. So the did the flood happened to because of your karma. Uh huh. Is 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 that is that because of karma? No, that is because of the nature. Okay, the things happen in the nature is not because of karma. Okay, so there are certain things, many things that. Has, is not happening because of karma. Buddha said, if you think, if you think that everything that happens in life is because of karma, okay, if you hold on to that idea, then you will be a lazy person. Why? Because he, when something bad happens, then people will think, oh, this is my karma, I cannot do anything, I cannot change anything, so I, I just wait. They will not try to make their life better. Okay. Let's say somebody is born, um, born to a poor family. Okay. Now what he should do, he or she should do, he should try to earn money. No? He, he, he should try to be rich. But if he believes that, oh, this is my karma, I was born to a poor family because of my karma, so I don't, I cannot do anything. I don't want to try. So then he will be poor forever. No. What if he tried and he had, uh, he was lucky enough to become a rich person. No. There are, there were, there are people in this world who were born poor. Okay. But when they, they became, they became rich. Okay. That is the thing. That is the thing. Don't think like everything is because of karma. Okay. You can change your life. Okay. Right.
Why do Swaminasis have to shave the head? Why? Because it's very easy. Because we don't want to think about the hairstyles, you know. It's very simple now, okay? You don't want to think about the hair getting messy, okay? Our hair is not getting messy. Never. It will never get messy. Okay. And this is the best hairstyle in the world. The most cheapest and the best hairstyle. Why? Because it's very free, you know. Now you have to think about your hair before going anywhere else, right? You have to think about hair. The hair, okay, sometimes so you have, you're wondering about do people like my hair or not? Okay. We don't want to think about that. That is why. For the simplicity. Okay. The only difficult thing, okay, for me, it's not, it's, it's for me. Okay. The only difficult thing is to shave my head every other day. That is the difficulty. Okay. Sometimes I have to shave my head. Okay. Right. Uh, let's see. Let's go for another question. Right, let's go for another question. Everything is impermanent. So is Dhamma impermanent too? Well, Dhamma is not impermanent. It prevails all the time in this world. Okay? But the Buddha's teachings, okay? But the Buddha's teachings will, there are, there are times in this world that people do not know about Buddha's teachings. It go extinct, okay? It goes extinct. That means there is no one 
on this earth who is practicing the Buddha's teachings. There are, there are times like that in the, in the future and in the past. Okay. So uh, the Dhamma is not, it is not impermanent. It prevails all the time, but the practice, the people who practice and the people who uh, follow that Dhamma will be impermanent. Okay. That is the thing. Okay, Mahidi, what's the question? Mahidi wants to ask a question. Um, so I answer, if we are doing good karma, are we going to uh, do a good worlds? If we do bad karma, are we going to do, go to bad worlds? Yeah. So that depends on according to your uh, power of good and bad karma. Okay. Uh, I found a sutta. In that sutta, the Buddha teaches, uh, Buddha teaches us, I see there are people, okay, who do good things in this life, okay, but in the next life, they, they, are, going, they are being born in hell, okay? In the next life, they are being born in hell. They go to hell. And also, the Buddha sees that the pe there are people who do bad things, but in the next life, they go to heaven. Okay? Quite different, no? But then the Buddha says, the reason for those people to... Now, if say, let's say there is someone who is doing good things, but he goes to the hell in the next life. The reason why the, he goes to the hell, because there is a bad karma that is very powerful that he has done, he or she has done in earlier. So that is very powerful. Because of that bad karma, he go to the hell in that life. Okay, in the next life. But the things that he has done, the good things that she, he or she has done is not finished. Okay, in another life, he will gain a good life because of the good karma. Okay, so we cannot exactly say that he is going to a good world or not because we don't know what we have done in the past lives. Okay, but the only thing that we can do is we can keep collecting good karma and practicing Dhamma and collecting merits. That is the thing that we can do. Okay. Ah, okay, Dhammadaya Dua is asking, uh, to learn Dhamma, it is better to listen to sermons or read books, or uh, does it depend on the individual? May Swami Nahasa recommend some good English books to learn Dhamma, uh, to learn Dhamma, okay. To learn Dhamma, you have to find one path that works for you. Okay, for some people, they can learn Dhamma easily by reading books. Okay, for some people, they can easily learn by learn Dhamma by listening to sermons. Okay, so you have to try both ways and find uh, find the best way that you, that works for you. Okay, if you are familiar with reading books, then keep on reading. Okay. So what I recommend is for most people, it is very easy to learn Dhamma by reading books per day. Okay. So shall I recommend some good books for you to read? Uh, uh, to read? Huh? So if you want to learn the Buddha's teachings, first of all, step into and have a good idea. The first book that you, you, 
the children you are in your age should read is uh, the Buddhism book from our local Swami Nuhansi. Okay. Hansaja, can you show the book uh, if there is a picture with you? You can show the book, okay? So Buddhism book explains uh, the basic concepts of uh, Buddhism, Buddha's teachings, uh, very sim in, in a very simple way, okay? Read it. Let's see if I can find it. So one of the best books that you can read for to learn about Buddhism, Buddha's teachings, is Buddhism book. I will show you. Wait a minute. Right, I found it. Can you see this book? This is a Buddhism book with it. Okay. So if you can find this book, okay, you can buy this book from Amazon also. And also you can, if you go to Mahamayana Monastery, definitely you can buy this. Okay. So in this book, today it's very, uh, in, in a, it explains in very simple way. Okay. If you can, you can learn. And also then if you can learn about uh, Buddhism and you can, if you want to study Buddhism, there's another book called uh, uh, What the Buddha, let me see. Buddha and his teachings. This is a little bit. Uh, little bit complicated, but it's very easy to learn. Let me see the book. Uh, this is the one. Okay. This book also very good. This one. And then next part is, if you want to learn suttas, okay? If you want to learn suttas and if you want to learn the Buddha's uh, discourses, then definitely you have to read uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi's books, okay? Bhikkhu Bodhi Swaminas' books. They are very good. His translations are very good, okay? And there are several, many publications from our local Swami Nuhanse that there are many things that you can learn, okay? Uh, and also, the one of the best books that you can read, I highly recommend this one for you, for all of you, is Marvelous Sage. See, we can find it. Yes, we can. It is there. This book. Okay. Marvelous Sage book. It's very good. In this book, with a local Swaminasa has explained about the Buddha and his life and everything in a very, very simple way. Okay. So these are the books that you can read. Okay. 
I will say it book. Ah, yeah, show this reading it these days. Very good. Let's see. Why did Mogalana Thero was blue color? Oh, good question. Most of you children are very curious about it. Why Mogalan Thero's statue is blue color? Huh? Now it says that Mogalan Thero was not blue color, but he was a little bit dark. His skin color was a little bit dark. Okay. And also there's another story that it says that Mogalana, Arahant Mogalana was beaten to beaten by the robbers until he, his body became blue color. Okay, there's another reason. But uh, I, I, I think the reason why people, the artists who uh, made the statues, uh, make it, made it blue because he was, his skin color was dark. Okay. At what age children can be monks? Okay. After seven years old, you can be a monk. Okay, not before that. After seven years old, you can be a monk. Okay. But it is very, it is much better to be a monk. If you want to be a monk one day, it is much better to uh, be a monk in your 20s. Okay, not before that. Then you have a little bit of experience in your life and you know uh, your, your mind is a little bit matured. So you know what to do. Okay. Are there any children who, need, who likes to be monks here? Hmm? Uh, there's another book that you should read. Definitely. This one is this one is a must. Okay. What is that? That should be, you should use it uh, frequently. What is it? My favorite book. That is Dhammapada. Okay. Do you have a Dhammapada book with you at your home? Ah. If you're having a if you're having a bad day, okay, if you're having a tough time. Just take it and read it, okay? You will find some answers for your problems all the time, okay? So sometimes I am having bad days, okay? Sometimes I am having bad days and tough times. What I do is I take the Mahapada book and I just read it, okay? It's very inspiring and it Buddha gives you many, many good advices. <clears throat> and if you want if you if you want to learn buddha's teachings from a website okay our sutta friends website is the ideal website for you okay have you ever been to sutta friends website i uh, know okay i'll show you this is where I read most of the suttas. That's it. Oh, here. Have you been to this website? Hmm? No? 
you must visit this website okay it is called sutta friends okay sutta friends when you go to website this website you can learn about many things in dhamma okay see there are topics you can learn you can learn about meditation you can learn about loving kindness confidence four noble truths sharing merits power of merits there are many okay and then you can meet arahants in this website how to meet arahants by reading the theragathas okay and also you can you can meet uh, king pasena the kosala you can meet lord sakka this is a nice website okay you can read suttas you can read stories here okay and below that okay in the bottom you can find here you can read dhammapada okay all dhammapada is here you can read it okay either you can read it with pali see pali and you click pali language it gets you can get pali then you can if you want to read it in sinhala then you can read it in sinhala it's a very very nice one okay you have to read it okay so now let's have a little bit of a break and then let's come back join back okay namo buddhaya namo buddhaya namo buddhaya namo buddhaya namo buddhaya namo buddhaya namo yatapi pupara simha kaira mala gune bahu evam jate namachena kattapam kusalam bahu as an expert garland maker makes many garlands from a heap of flowers you who obtain the human life should do many wholesome deeds so meritorious dhamma friends let's start filling our life garlands with wholesome deeds namo buddhaya
we were so fortunate that our pinwhat swami dancer kindly allowed us to participate in the seven day breakfast and lunch dana offering from the 25th of january to the 31st of january 2021 my mother asked whether we like to offer anything special my sister and i love desserts so we selected desserts that we like via online and sent those yummy desserts to our asapur our great teacher supreme buddha taught us if we offer something we like to the maha sangha we can accumulate an enormous amount of merit Not only that, but also we ordered beautiful flowers and gardens to the Dartmoor Mahanse too. For this meritorious deed, not only our grandparents from Sri Lanka were involved, but also our local amma and her family who live in Ireland joined too. For monks in the morning program, we learned that if you are virtuous and you offer something to more virtuous people like the maha sangha, you will collect an enormous merit. Therefore, we decided to observe eight precepts too. As we have online school, while observing eight precepts, we engaged in school lessons too. We all ate before 12 o'clock. Normally, for other school days, especially during lunch time, we normally talk to our friends or play video games. But for these seven days during lunch time, we didn't do any of that because we knew how rare this opportunity is. We were willing to sacrifice anything for that. Instead. We started the day by offering Buddha puja and Buddha vandana. We listened to the foundation of mindfulness Dharma sermon series done by Cedia. We did meditations and poetry the chanting too by listening to the Cedia YouTube channel. We're so grateful to our Cedia Swaminatha and Cedia volunteers to recording these meditations and Dharma clips and uploading them on social media. Therefore, my dear Dharma friends, do not worry if you're living far away. You can still do meritorious activities such as observing eight precepts, sponsoring Dharma for seven days, listening to Dharma, meditations, and many more. All books of our lucky Swami Nanda and his student Swami Nanda. In addition to that, during that week, we donated some money to the Swadha charity for their remarkable projects, such as donation of clean water, blood donation drives, assisting the sick, educational scholarships, saving animals' lives, and helping those in need. We did all of those meritorious deeds and activities to gain more merit. Why is this different to one day dana offering? Many people, when they offer one day dana, they're offering food to the maha sangha, but the majority will still not observe sil. We're so lucky to offer food to the maha sangha. and observe the eight precepts for seven continuous days throughout that seven days the maha sangha consumes the food that we are offering and engages in meritorious activities such as preaching dharma translating lok swaminarayan's books meditation so no doubt that we gained enormous merit by offering dana to this virtuous sangha who practices in the buddhist teachings How lucky are we to engage in this rare meritorious deed? May our homage be to the noble sangha, the field of merit for this world. Let's get ready for the meditation now. 
get ready for the meditation. Sit in a relaxed position. Cross your legs. <clears throat> okay. Keep your left palm under the right palm. and close your eyes. Okay. Now listen to the meditation. Namo Buddhaya. Today, let's start our practice with loving-kindness meditation, allowing love and compassion to radiate from within us. Begin by getting yourself to a comfortable posture and slowly take a deep breath in and as you exhale, release any tension or stress from your body. Feel your body relax and surrender to this present moment. Breathe in and breathe out. Just follow your breath as it comes in and then out from your body. Just simply be aware of it and give your attention to each in-breath and then to each out breath. When you notice your mind wandering, it really offers us an opportunity to cultivate mindfulness and concentration. So treat the distractions as an opportunity rather than a problem and just return to the breath. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's spend the beginning of this practice by tuning into directing loving-kindness to ourselves. Simply let your heart open up to the presence of love and peace that is within you. You can cultivate this intention to open the heart to your own well-being by silently offering yourself these phrases of metta or loving-kindness. Slowly and silently repeat these phrases in your mind. May I be happy. May I be healthy. 
May I be safe. May I live with ease. May I live happily. May I live happily. May I live happily. And when you feel as though you are ready to overflow with love and kindness, send that love out from your heart to the room around you or if you're at outdoors, just imagine your love flowing within the area of your presence. Allow your love and kindness that is pouring from your heart to reach into every place of the space around you. And silently, Repeat these phrases of metta in your mind. May all beings around me be happy. May they be healthy. May they be safe. May they Live with ease. May they live happily. May they live happily. May they live happily. Now imagine your love and kindness that is within your heart flowing into your entire town, village or city. Feel it flowing out and see it travelling through every corner of your hometown. And with all the love in your heart, Repeat these phrases of metta in your mind. May all beings in my city be happy. May they be healthy. May they be safe. May they live with ease. May they live happily. May they live happily. May they live happily. Now, let's take another step forward and spread our love and kindness to all beings in our country. Imagine your love and kindness flowing into everyone in your country, including your family, friends, relatives, and animals. Imagine their hearts get healed by your love. And now, repeat these phrases of metta in your mind. May all beings in my country be happy. May they be healthy. May they be safe. May they live with ease. May they live happily. May they live
live happily. May they live happily. Now let's get ready to send our thoughts of love and kindness out into our entire world. Just watch your love flow through every ocean, every continent, until all of the earth is lit up with your love and kindness. And with all that love in your heart, repeat these phrases in your mind. May all beings in this world be happy. May they be healthy. May they be safe. May they live with ease. May they live happily. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be safe. May all beings live with ease. May all beings live happily. May all beings live happily. May all beings live happily. Now, slowly bring your palms together into prayer position right in front of your heart. And bow your head in reverence to all of this wonderful loving kindness. And repeat these phrases after me. Sabbi Sata Sukino Bhavantu Sabbi Sata Sukino Bhavantu Sabbi Sata Sukino Bhavantu May all beings live happily. May all beings live happily. May all beings live happily. Now, slowly, just open your eyes to this loving world around you. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Okay. Open your eyes and say Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. sadhu. Okay. So time has passed now so it is the time to wind up our dumb school right so all of you say sadhu again sadhu 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 now let's share our merits first of all let's share the merits with all of uh, all the gods who protect the gautam with this dispensation May all the gods rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy. May they live long, may they live a happy life and may they protect all the children who join the Dhamma school today. And may all the gods realize four noble truths in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, 
Sato. I like share the merits with uh, our parents and our teachers. May all of them rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy. May they live long. May they live a happy life. And may they realize four noble truths in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. And I share the merits with our Pinod Lokaswami Vahansa and with monks and nuns of Mahamuna um, monasteries. May Mahasangha rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy. May they live long, may they live a happy life. And may they be able to realize for noble truth in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Let's share the merits with uh, all the children who joined the Dhamma school today. May all of you children rejoice in this merit and may you be well and happy. May you live long, may you live a happy life. And may all of your education become successful. And may all of your good hopes become true. And may all of you be able to realize for noble truth in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. All right. Now you have the good deed session. Okay, you have to join for that. Vishaka Akka is going to do that. So join to the good deed session and then you can leave. Okay, so now you can pay homage to Swami. So Boma Pin Center for conducting an amazing that the amazing Dhamma sermon and Q and A session and meditation with the, with all of us it was very useful and we learned a lot. So Boma Pin Center. So now let's worship in what Swami Nwansi. You can go down to the floor and worship Swami Nwansi. Keep both palms together on top of your head. You can recite these stanzas with me. Oka Savanda Mibante, Maya Katam Punyang, Samina Anamodita Bang, Sadu Sadu Samina Katam Punyang, my hang that Bang, Sadu and Modita, Sadu Sadu Anamoda me, Oka Sadaratena Katam Sapang, Achayan come at the Mibante, Amami come it up. O kasa kamami bante, tutiampi o kasa kamami bante, tatiampi o kasa kamami bante. Sadhu, 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 I'm blessing you. Abhiva the Nasili sir, Nichang Vada Pachaino, Chataro, Tama Vadhanti, Ayuan no Sukambala, Ayuraro, Gisampati, Sagasampati me vacher. Ato nibbana sampati inati samichetu. Super Deva, Super Deva. Okay, let's meet in the next week. Namo Buddhaya. Join to the good deed session, right? Namo Buddhaya, Terence Ramani, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, okay. So, so how was the Dhamma sermon that you learned today, the Q&A and the meditation? Did you like it? Yes, it was very good, isn't it? Yeah. So we should be grateful to Swami Nvanse for continuously teaching us. <laughs>